Hey, this is Professor Homa. Welcome to EX1 Colorize. And what we're looking at right now is a color photograph of a covered bridge. The reason we're looking at this photo is because we're actually going to have a black and white version of this that we're going to colorize. And we're going to use different layers to colorize it. And we're going to learn some new methods to colorize that are that make it more flexible to change color. We're also going to work with um, using not really layer masks, but we're going to be loading uh, channels so that we can actually use those to kind of make very complex selections. So we're going to be doing that with this exercise. So it'll be fun doing some coloring and it'll also be educational because we'll be learning some more advanced Photoshop tools. Now I'm showing you this picture so you see what it looks like. You can see it's a red covered bridge. You can see there's stone on the side and the grass is green and the trees are green and the sky is blue. And obviously, if we had time, we'd probably get rid of the wires ahead of time. Here's the back side of that. And, you know, we're not going to get rid of the wires yet. We'll leave in the wires for now. But we're going to colorize this. And we're, it's been turned into black and white. It's been turned into grayscale. So we're going to talk a little bit about grayscale and color mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to colorize it. And we're going to do something like that. And now it's an artificial colorizing that we're using. Let me show you what we have here. We have a whole bunch of layers here that are above the original one that are used to colorize the different parts. Like for example, some of the early ones are the grass. So I can turn off the grass. Now it's black and white. Now it's color. There's the sky. Now it's black and white. Now it's color. And also the trees and the bush. We can color them. And now let me point out that these trees and the bushes you know, we're coloring over them and we're going to be painting over them, but they're very hard to select. There's a lot of like sky in between here. There's siding in between. There's all kinds of stuff back there. So we're going to be using complex masks to help select that a little better, just so we don't have to like zoom in there super tight and try to paint every single leaf. That'll take forever. So we're going to use some masks for that. We're also going to use a technique where when we work on these layers, no matter if it's the water, the sky, the wood, the siding, any of this stuff, and the wood is the, the white part here. Um, no matter what part we use here, we're going to be painting with black. If you look in my foreground color here, we're going to be painting with our paintbrush and painting black. That way when we change colors, we just have to, we're going to use a color overlay effect to really change colors. So if at any point we want to change colors, just for example, if I go down here to my grass and I turn it on, if I thought the grass was too saturated, I could double click on my effects and I'd have to kind of go up here to my color. Here's my color overlay that I'm working with. And if I want to change that, you know, let's say I want a purple grass. There's purple grass. So I'll go back to green and let's say I just want to desaturate a little bit. It's a little too strong. I can move my saturation level over to the grays a little bit more and hit OK. And it affects everything I, I've done already and I don't have to repaint it. And even if I was painting on there, it would paint in that color now because we have it set to black basically with a color overlay on top of it, that's an effect that we could turn off and on. So if I went down the grass and I turned off that effect, it would basically be black. Now the reason we're seeing through that is another effect that if you look up here, it's a blending mode for a layer. And there's all kinds of blending modes. You've seen all these before. Dissolve, dark, and multiply. They even have an overlay, soft light, all these. You could experiment, but we're going to be working with this one, color for now and what that does is it allows the highlights and the shadows to kind of show through so it's not the same as just like painting over a layer and turning down the opacity because that kind of gives it a muddy kind of color so this one when we when we put these put these on let me put on these effects again when you put these on what it does is it is it kind of puts the color over it but it lets the highlights and the darks to show through so it gives more of a realistic effect again it's still colorizing just like you've seen colorized films and colorized photo it's never perfect even in here I look at this part of it and that shadow should be a little darker it doesn't look quite as realistic as it should be but that's kind of stuff we can work with a little bit and the nice thing about this method is if you don't like the color we can go back and change it real easy by just double clicking on the effect. If you thought the stone, if you thought the color on the stone was too warm, you could just go and find the stone layer and double click on the effects and go to color overlay and just change the color and lighten it up a little. And then and if I hit OK, there it is. Now that stone color is a little lightened. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to go through the process of doing this and creating kind of our color. I made a I made a layer folder. You don't have to make a layer folder. I did that after the fact so I could kind of turn it on and off. But a good habit to get into. And we're going to start working on this. 